Electrical cable cleaning is necessary during the splicing and terminating of high voltage cable. The cleaning removes contaminants from the cable insulation and eliminates any path for electrical tracking or arcing. Specialty cleaning solvents quickly and easily remove such contaminants. 111 trichloroethane, the most common electrical cleaning solvent, is being phased out of production. A number of good alternative cleaners have been developed, and with proper knowledge and technique, these cleaners can be used safely with no adverse effect on the cable or splice. It is important to only use electrical cleaning solvents where they are really needed. For instance, solvent cleaners should not be used for removing dirt from a dug-up cable. In this case, spraying solvent could swell the cable jacket and cause failure. Dirt and earth should be removed by washing the cable with water and a rag. As seen here, a scrubbing tool with a built-in reservoir can make the job fast and easy. Dirt should be removed from the jacket with a water cleaning. Solvents are not needed. Solvent cleaners are needed to remove residues from cable insulation. One common type of residue is insulation shield left after stripping. The stripping of a cross-link polyethylene shield from cross-link poly insulation is shown here. Strip back distances vary by size and type of cable and splice and are provided in the splice manufacturer's instructions. The amount of shield residue left on the insulation can vary significantly depending on conditions. The easy strip shield just removed from the cross-link poly insulation has not left much visible residue. However, even though the insulation looks clean, note the amount of black semicon material removed with a cleaning wipe. The technique used for the solvent wipe is very important. The wiping should always be from the conductor towards the semicon shield. Here, a circular wiping motion on the insulation going from conductor towards shield is used to clean EPR. Note that we are getting a significant amount of black shield residue on the towel. In this case, we will turn the towel to expose a fresh area for the next wipe. A similar technique is used for subsequent wipes until we get a clean surface. Only the insulation gets cleaned, not the insulation shield or cable jacket. It is extremely important to avoid wiping from the insulation shield onto the insulation. This demonstration shows why. Semiconducting residue is being moved onto the insulation by the towel. Note how much black is picked up from the shield itself. These accidental deposits provide a tracking path for splice failure. Wipe the residue off the insulation, not onto it. On some types of cable, the solvent cleaner is needed to wash off painted insulation shield, which can't be stripped. A good solvent can quickly dissolve and remove this black semiconducting coating, here exposing the white cross-link polyethylene insulation. Several wipes and towels are needed to get the insulation completely clean. If desired, a non-woven abrasive pad can be used to abrade off any remaining residue. Then a final wipe with a clean solvent towel will leave a clean insulation surface ready for splicing. The type of towel used for wiping is important. It should be clean, tear-resistant, and non-linting. Do not use old rags which can deposit more grime than they remove. The synthetic towels shown are non-woven with no fiber binding adhesives to dissolve in the solvent and be left as residue. If desired, sanding cloth can be used to remove polymer residue from cable insulation. A non-conductive aluminum oxide abrasive is recommended. Use a light, even sanding. Sanding away insulation to remove nicks or cuts is not recommended, however. The resulting reduction in insulation thickness could cause failure. Avoid such nicks or cuts in the first place by using proper stripping tools and techniques. Electrical cleaning solvents will remove other contaminants which may be on the insulation. Here, an accidental smear of aluminum contact aid needs to be cleaned. Because the contact aid contains metal particles, it should be removed with a solvent wipe. Sanding could press the metal particles into the insulation, providing focal points for failure. The cleaning technique is similar to those demonstrated previously. Cleaning solvent should never be poured directly on an electrical cable, and cable should never be dipped into solvent. 
Exposure to excess solvent can adversely affect a number of cable and splice components, especially the semiconducting polymer materials. Aerosol spray cans of solvent are sometimes used for cable cleaning. Again, it is important to avoid spraying directly onto a cable. This can put too much solvent on the cable. If a spray is preferred, a refillable solvent-resistant trigger spray bottle is recommended. These sprayers can be refilled from bulk containers and reused, minimizing costs and disposal. Spray from the bottle onto a clean, lint-free towel. If the towel gets too wet with solvent, the excess should be squeezed out before use. The insulation is then cleaned by wiping with the towel as demonstrated previously. A number of alternative cleaners evaporate much slower than trichlor does. If the solvent is not evaporating quickly enough to proceed, as indicated by a sheen on the insulation surface, a clean towel should be used to dry the excess before proceeding. The control solvent quantity in the Pell Pack prep kit produces a damp towel which cleans effectively but avoids excess. Cable cleaning solvents can be used for a variety of other electrical cleaning jobs. One use is the removal of silicone grease from tools, parking bushings, or other components. The principles for this cleaning are similar to those for cable itself. Avoid excess solvent and wipe the grease clean. As with cable, avoid spraying directly onto or into a component part. Here, too much solvent in a bushing well could affect the epoxy around the stud, causing oil leakage and failure. Several different Splice Master electrical cleaners have been used for demonstration in this video. The different types fit specific end-user needs and procedures. The cleaners vary in strength, evaporation rate, and odor. Color-coded labels indicate the specific type. With any cleaner, there will be an exposure of the splicer to solvent vapors in the air. Ventilation should be used when necessary to keep vapor concentrations at safe working levels. In close environments, vapor exposure can be controlled by using the Pell Packed prep kits. From details on ventilation, temperature, and vault size, vapor levels can be estimated and safe use procedures developed with the Pell Pack system. This graph shows vapor levels over time in a vault. Solvent vapor concentrations remain well below the safe working level. With the proper products and techniques, electrical cleaning can be done safely and effectively. Please contact American Polywater Corporation for additional product or applications information.